Hey, it's Glennis here from Horse Chats. Horse Chats is a podcast just educating people more about horses and we chat with equine industry experts, also from International Horse College. International Horse College is a government accredited registered training organisation where we have courses for people within the international horse industry. If you're not sure, just go and have a look now internationalhorsecollege.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about riding for safe confidence cross-country jumping and sometimes people they start jumping and they get a little bit worried about it because cross-country jumping you know has got the has got the um, I suppose the thoughts they think it's going to be a bit dangerous and the horse is going to be a bit out of control and we're going to do some exercises today to show you that your horse doesn't have to be out of control just because you're doing cross-country. So before you start thinking about jumping, you should be able to walk, trot and canter happy, confidently in a big open area similar to the one behind me here. Um, the horse should be happy to go around, canter, lengthen, shorten stride, go on both leads and pretty much go around the whole area uh, without worrying about other horses and, without, and keeping the same rhythm and tempo, you know, not getting faster and slower. So once the horse can do that, I tend to go on and... Um, Look then for a nice big, um, deer, I should say undulating country. So if we're looking at undulating country, something where the horse is going up and down and, you know, where it could be like a bit of a dry creek bed or it could be a bit of a hill or something like that. And the main thing is that the horse has got to maintain their rhythm and tempo. So you might start off just in walk and do a big circle, you know, 40, 50 metre circle around on this undulating country and um, the horse should be able to walk the whole way. You shouldn't slow down going down the hill and then jog on the way up or when he gets down the bottom he wants to jog and take a couple of bounds up the hill just to get up the hill in a hurry. We're really looking at um, the horse maintaining the rhythm and tempo the whole time. Once they can do that in walk and trot um, they should be able to do it without walking or once in trot they should be able to do it without walking without slowing down down the hill without bounding and wanting to canter up the hill and um, once only once before that you can have them in trot big circle both ways circle after circle trot 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 so it's almost a bit oh yeah I've got to trot down the hill I've got to trot up the hill I can't canter I can't walk I can't stop can't have a look once they're doing that that's the time to start the canter and if they can't maintain the trot within that 40 meter circle both ways circle after circle after circle they're probably not ready to go on and go into canter now some people might think that they're ready to go into canter but i just think if you don't get your basics right at this level once you get to the higher level if the horse is out of control at this level which basically they are if you're saying trot and they decide to canter or they decide to walk they're out of control so once the horse is okay at this level where they can trot in those big 20 meter or 40 meter, 50 meter circles, that's the time to introduce canter. Now you'd introduce it as you're approaching the downhill. You wouldn't introduce it going up a hill. You'd make them trot to the top of the hill because if you introduced it going up the hill, sometimes they want to take a couple of bounds up the hill and all of a sudden jump up the top of the hill and uh, throw in a big buck at the, at the top, which would unseat the rider. So cantering along on the flat, cantering down the hill, and even to the stage where you might canter down the hill, trot up the hill. Because the horse wants to trot down the hill, canter up the hill, so you just do the opposite and make sure that the horse is listening to the rider. So cantering on the flat, cantering down the hill, trotting up the hill, and then introducing canter once you're at the top of the hill. And then I think from there, then you can start to say, right, now we'll start to do these big canter circles you know, 40, 50 metre circles. So if they can maintain that rhythm and tempo both ways in the undulating country, both ways, picking up the leads without the horse getting too upset, too stressed, without the rider getting too nervous or worried or anything else. And before that, and that can be done in the warm up, it can be done in the training, then the horse is ready to go on and start doing some cross country jumping. It's a good way for, um, for instructors to check horses, to check that the riders are going to maintain the horse. Particularly useful when, um, when you've got a new group of horses, new group of riders, ones you haven't seen for a while, ones you haven't seen jumping cross country at all. So it's a good warm up exercise and it's also a good check exercise 
to make sure that those horses and those riders really are under control before you even go and pop over a single log. It's a great warm-up exercise and great training exercises for people that like to, um, you know, they've got their young horse, they've got them out, they're riding them around, and it's just a great training exercise for them in preparation for them to learn how to jump. All right, this is Glennis Cox from Horse Chats where we interview equine industry experts and we get their advice from them. Just go to horsechats.com, have a look in the search bar, have a look and do a search for a word that you'd like to do in all areas of the horse industry or go to internationalhorsecollege.com and have a look at the courses that you might want to have a look, um, might, want, might be interested in there. Also like this post, like the pages and uh, contact us if you need to. Thanks, bye.